Welcome to the IASB podcast for the month of April. My name is Claire Short and I am part of the communications team. Today I'm joined by Hans Hoogevoost and Sue Lloyd, Chair and Vice Chair of the International Accounting Standards Board, respectively. The coronavirus pandemic represents an unprecedented global crisis affecting not only our collective well-being but the global economy. It's changed the way we as an organization operate in a number of ways and we're effectively using modern technologies to make a success of working remotely. This month, we also held a supplementary board meeting in addition to our usual sessions to focus specifically on the repercussions of COVID-19 on our stakeholders. Hans, can you fill us in on that? Yes, uh, Claire. Well, obviously, uh, COVID-19 is uh, very tough on uh, many of our stakeholders. Uh, we at as the ISB can continue working uh, not as usual, but we can still do a lot uh, through remote working. But for a lot of our stakeholders, uh, this is all a very difficult situation. Uh, so we have to act where necessary to support stakeholders during these uh, difficult times. And uh, even uh, before the supplementary meeting, we had released uh, some educational material uh, highlighting how to consider the COVID-19 pandemic for expected credit losses under IFRS 9. Uh, obviously, uh, banks are to be heavily impacted by the uh, economic uh, uh, the economic situation uh, currently, and uh, we felt it was good to uh, highlight uh, how to deal under these circumstances with IFRS 9. So we issued some educational material regarding the application of IFRS 16 leases to deal with uh, rent. Uh, which are granted in many parts of the world as a result of the uh, pandemic. These materials, it's important to say, uh, don't change the requirements in any way, but they point out some important aspects of these standards that are particularly important in these uh, difficult uh, circumstances. Thank you, Hans. A reminder to listeners that these educational materials can be found on ifrs.org. Sue, could you please let us know what topics were discussed at the supplementary meeting held remotely on Friday, 17 April? Sure. So there were there were sort of two aspects to the meeting. And the first was the impact of COVID-19 on our projects and timelines. So we talked about what the implications should be for different projects. And there were sort of a couple of different groups here. So despite the challenges that are arising from the uh, coronavirus pandemic, we decided that we do need to continue to our advance our time-sensitive projects in the normal way. So, for example, the projects on eyeball reform and the amendments to IFRS 17, the insurance contract standard, are continuing based on the original timetables. And importantly, we've actually uh, recently got out the eyeball exposure draft, which proposes changes to assist preparers and investors with uh, financial reporting issues that are coming about because of changes in contracts caused by eyeball reform. And as we'd all re always planned, that's gone out with a 45-day comment period because it's still a set of changes that's urgently needed in the market. But on the, on the other hand, we recognise that not everything we're working on is time critical, and we need to make sure that people have got the time they need to really respond effectively to our work. So uh, reflecting the challenging situation that people are having to deal with, we decided that it was appropriate to extend the comment period on some of the um, consultation documents that we've already got out for comment. So at this meeting, we agreed to extend by three months the comment periods on the exposure draft for primary financial statements, the discussion paper that we've got out dealing with um, business combination information and goodwill and impairment, and the request for information for the comprehensive review of the IFRS for SMEs standards. We also decided to issue an exposure draft, which will propose extending by a year the effective date of some recent amendments that we made um, to IAS 1 uh, that's dealing with the classification of liabilities as current or non-current. And then we decided that for things that we haven't published yet that we're working on at the moment, we'll delay the publication dates for a few things, um, given the uh, competing priorities people have got. So, for example, the request for information um, 
for the agenda consultation, asking people what they want us to work on for the next five years is going to be deferred. So rather than being issued late this year, it will be moved to March 2021. So that was the first set of issues that we discussed at that supplementary meeting. In addition to that, the second thing that we talked about was a specific issue that's come up as a result of COVID-19. And this relates to lease accounting. Now, as many will know, um, at the moment, many leases are being modified, in particular to provide rent concessions to lessees, um, given the challenging environment. And if you apply IFRS 16, the lease is standard as it's written at the moment. Dealing with those changes can be a pretty time consuming process. So, for example, companies need to work out whether or not the rent concession arises as a result of terms and conditions they've already got in their contracts. And that could mean that lessees need to look at a large number of contracts to make that assessment. So at the supplementary meeting, the board decided to propose some operational relief by letting lessees choose, it's an, uh, an optional exemption, uh, rather than having to assess whether or not a COVID-19 rent concession is a lease modification, they could basically choose to assume it's not a lease modification, which simplifies the resulting accounting. Um, we decided that there'd be a substantial operational benefit for lessees and useful information can still be provided to lessor, uh, sorry, to investors, and so the costs exceed the benefits. Now, obviously, to be useful to people, this needs to be available sooner rather than later. Um, so we have got permission from our trustees to um, have a very short comment period on the exposure draft, a 14-day comment period, and we moved very very quickly with our drafting as well. So we've actually, last Friday, actually published the exposure draft proposing these changes. So for those who are interested um, in accounting for from a lessee perspective for rent concessions, you should take a look at that exposure draft and uh, write to us quickly. Yes, yeah, some people can access that ex exposure draft on the homepage of our website, ifres.org. So if anyone has an interest in that, please pop along to our website and um, get involved in the commenting. Moving on to the usual um, board session that was held from the 21st to the 23rd of April 2020. Um, Hans, can you take us through some of the key projects highlighted during this session? Uh, yes, well, first of all, we uh, received an update, an oral update on uh, progress on IFRS 17, our insurance standards. This is one of the uh, time sensitive projects that we have decided to keep on schedule. Um, and uh, the objective of the staff's update was to inform the board on the status of the project to publish the amendments to IFRS 17 uh, and the staff's plan to bring any sweep issues if they are there. Uh, in drafting uh, to the next uh, board meeting. Uh, the uh, staff was able to tell us that uh, everything is going according to plan uh, and that the board will uh, be able to issue the amendments uh, to IFRS 17 in the second quarter of 2020. Uh, I might also uh, mention uh, that this week I have published an article on uh, our previous decision to maintain annual cohorts and explaining uh, why that is the case, uh, I think it will. You know, a lot of people will find that uh, interesting to read. Um, then uh, we also discussed the post implementation reviews of IFRS 10, IFRS 11, and IFRS 12. A post implementation review, as people may know, a PIR, is a mandatory step in the due process for new uh, IFRS standards. Um, and uh, it is normally uh, structured in two phases. And at this meeting, the staff uh, presented the analysis of the findings from the first phase of the PIR of IFRS 10, Consolidated Financial Statements, IFRS uh, 11, Joint Arrangements, and IFRS 12, Disclosure of Interest in Other Entities. Uh, the uh, board was satisfied with the findings, and we decided to carry out a second phase of the PIR which is to publish a request for information, a so-called RFI. And the objective of the RFI would be to gather evidence on the requirements uh, identified in the first phase of the review, review from a broader group of stakeholders. And at our 
future meeting, the staff will bring a paper to the board to confirm that it has complied with the applicable due process requirements. <clears throat> Now, we also uh, discussed the uh, management commentary project. As people know, the management commentary is a narrative report that complements the financial statements. Uh, and although there are uh, challenges uh, created by COVID-19, we, for the time being, plan to publish an exposure draft for this project in December 2020, as uh, originally planned. And at our last meeting, the board decided that the objective of management commentary uh, is to help primary to assess the future cash flow and management stewardship of a company. And at this meeting, we discussed uh, disclosure objectives of three content areas of management commentary, namely the business model, strategy and resources and relationships. And the board agreed with the staff's recommendations on these disclosure objectives. Uh, also, it was a successful meeting as the board felt that the content areas of the management commentary are uh, starting to come along uh, uh, together very well. So uh, we really got, got a sense that we're going to land in a good place. Uh, and at a future meeting, the staff plan to discuss disclosure objectives on risk and operating environment. Thank you, Hans. Um, you also, during the meeting, touched on topics such as the comprehensive review of the IFRS for SME standard, the disclosure initiative subsidiaries that are SME's project, and um, financial in instruments with characteristics of equity. We aren't going into any depth on those during today's podcast, but any listeners that are interested in that can find more information and the full meeting update on the IFRS website at ifrs.org. Um, Sue, before we sign off, the board also heard some updates on the maintenance and consistent application um, theme. Can you fill us in on those? Sure. And and just to provide a little bit of colour, we haven't gone into all those other topics that Claire just listed because we are trying to not bog people down with things they don't have to follow right now. Um, we're moving things forward where we can, but we're aware that you know people don't need to follow every single board meeting if it's going to be a little while before things go out for comment. But maintenance and consistent applications are a little bit different because it's more live issues, so I'll comment on those uh, quickly. So on maintenance and consistent application, we talked about two main things. One was um, a question that came to the Interpretations Committee about how to do the sort of day two accounting for a sale and leaseback transaction, where the leaseback has variable payments, such as those that are linked to the lessee's turnover. Um, we found that there's essentially a, a bit of a gap in IFRS 16, and so the board agreed with the committee's recommendation that we fill that gap and do some standard setting. And the other thing we talked about was um, a project that we've been working on with the assistance of the committee, um, looking at how to estimate foreign exchange rates in environments where there's issues with the exchangeability of foreign currency. So um, there's details on that if people are interested in looking. Thank you, Sue and Hans. And that's it for this episode. Please keep visiting our website, ifres.org, to stay up to date with our projects, especially in the current coronavirus pandemic. If you have any co comments on this podcast, please email communications at ifres.org.